so we'll begin with constitution in this class so i can see many students have joined with us hi hi everyone so okay you can keep on asking questions in this live chat i'll try to keep a track of this so we'll begin with this uh, with our lesson constitution okay i'll also use some uh, terms in hindi so that students who have learned all their life all these topics in hindi so they can make a sense of this so this is topic constitution aur india ka jo samvidhan hai uske bare mein hai ye so just try to keep a look at this slide you'll go you'll know everything so first of all we have this written constitution it is not necessary that every country should have written constitution and many countries don't have their written constitution but we have a written constitution and this constitution of india is the backbone of democracy acha when we say democracy what do we mean by that because these are the questions these are the questions which they ask they try uh, these are the questions which they ask in interpretative type of questions they'll give some uh, paragraph or uh, they'll try that whether you know about it or not so when we say democracy what do we mean what do we mean that that this is government of the people by the people for the people that is we the people are electing our government so this is the basic understanding of democracy that we all have so this constitution of india is backbone of democracy what do we mean by this like we are the people who are electing our government and this government makes law within the parameter of constitution that this government cannot make law outside the parameter of this constitution so this constitution is backbone of democracy ठीक है दिस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज बैकबोन ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी बिकॉज वी इलेक्ट आर गवर्नमेंट एंड आर गवर्नमेंट फ्रेम्स लॉ मेक्स लॉ रेगुलेट्स लॉ विद इन द पैरामीटर ऑफ दिस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट इज एन अम्ब्रेला ऑफ राइट दैट गिव द सिटीजन एंड एश्योरेंस ऑफ फ्री एंड फेयर सोसाइटी सो वी नो दैट वी हैव सर्टेन फंडामेंटल राइट्स इन आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन free uh, right uh, right to live right to live with dignity right to education we have certain fundamental rights which we'll discuss later <coughs> but this constitution is an umbrella of rights and this umbrella of rights helps us helps a citizen ensures a citizen for free and fair society just society to ensure justice to each and every citizen of india okay so when is the republic dates we all know it's 26 january 1950 when the constitution came into force constitution came into force on 26 jan 1950 but when it was adopted it was adopted on 26 november 1949 so the constituent assembly after the independence the constituent assembly that drafted the constitution finalized and adopted it on 26 november 1949 and it came into effect came into force on 26 january 1950 so when we say ki ours is a democracy india is a democratic country what form of democratic country are we we are parliamentary democracy what form of democracy we are parliamentary democracy we all know that we have one parliament we have two houses in the parliament lok sabha and rajya sabha and executive is responsible to the parliament <coughs> we'll discuss about it but for that basic structure when we say we have parliament we have lok sabha and rajya sabha okay we have lok sabha we have rajya sabha and in lok sabha jaise abhi haal hi mein which government is in the power it's bjp and if we say bjp is the executive so this executive is responsible to the parliament bjp is responsible to whole parliament i mean the whole all the parties which together form the parliament so executive is responsible to the parliament okay okay so this is i think this slide was basic about constitution now we can go to a next slide okay the parliament the parliament has two houses lok sabha and rajya sabha as we discussed 
and when we say also the type of governance is federal what is this federal so this federal means division of power at center and state and local level of bodies so what do we mean by this when we say parliament has two houses lok sabha and rajya sabha we all know that come on now the when we say governance is federal what do we mean by that this is division of power division of power all the power legislative powers what are the legislative powers making the laws administrative powers yani ki prashasnik jitni bhi shaktiyan hain and executive all these powers are divided between center state and local bodies theek hai so ours is a federal yani ki separate executive and legislature at center and state we all know ki at center we have lok sabha and rajya sabha at state level also we have uh, two houses we have legislative assembly and legislative council <coughs> now we have self governance at local level we know about the local uh, local government panchayati raj system and all we have self governance at local level all these system owe their legacy to british administration so now in our constitution most of the features they are drawn from the british legislature british administration and for that you need to have a look over evolution of constitution okay the constitutional development during british rule now some of you might say that uh, th this is very detailed and would be don't need it but it is not so if you go through the previous years paper they have asked question on many of this constitutional development many questions on montagu shams for reform many questions on minto mole reforms they have asked the question like if we, if you'll give me your 40 minutes i'll cover this topic this is not taking anything from us let us go through this topic in this 30 40 minutes and after that i'll help you to solve those mcqs type of questions so that you can actually have very brief and precise uh, at the time uh, precise information at the time of your revision so this is like constitutional development during british rule okay so now before 1947 what was the condition of indian state india was divided into two entities one was british india जिसमें 11 प्रोविंसेस थी 11 प्रांत थे 11 प्रोविंसेस। सो इंडिया वाज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू वन वाज ब्रिटिश इंडिया एंड व्हाट वाज इन ब्रिटिश इंडिया 11 प्रोविंसेस। एंड सेकंड वाज प्रिंसली स्टेट प्रिंसली स्टेट्स वर मेजरली रूल्ड बाय इंडियन प्रिंसेस और इंडियन किंग्स इंडियन रूलर्स बट दीज प्रिंसली स्टेट्स were under this subsidiary alliance policy what is this subsidiary alliance policy that these princes these princely states had to give certain amount to british government for the maintenance of their army like you are ruling your state that is okay but you have to pay certain amount of subsidy so this was subsidiary subsidiary alliance policy <coughs> so now uh, this second point says ki if you want to know how this constitution when we see it today how it has become how it has evolved you will have to see many regulation and acts which were passed before indian independence act of 1947 okay one very important thing law made before charter act of 1833 before 1833 any law which was made was called regulation and after that it was called acts and even today we call it act theek hai any law that comes into force which is passed we call it act but before 1833 we used to call it regulation so i think this is clear these are very simple things but you can't ignore these because they ask very basic questions out of these <coughs> so first is regulating act of 1773 1773 ka jo regulating act hai 
This was first step taken by British Parliament. British Parliament took first step, first administrative or regulating act. This was 1773. And why did they take this step? They wanted to control and regulate the affairs of East India Company in India. So we all know East India Company came in India to do business and trade. Later on, they uh, started doing administration and all that. So they wanted to control and regulate the affairs of East India Company. I mean, the single company that was trying to rule India, they wanted to control and regulate it. Then what did they do? It designated the governor of Bengal as governor general. This is the most important thing. That in 1773 act, governor of Bengal, Jo governor of Bengal the, wo post was converted to governor general's post. So according to 1773 uh, act, governor of Bengal was, was designated as governor general of Bengal. And who was the first governor general? It was Warren Hastings. Okay, Warren Hastings. So these are the, I think, two very important points. That act of 1773 designated governor of Bengal as governor general of Bengal and Warren Hastings became the first governor general of Bengal. Then executive council of governor general was established. Now one governor general is established. That position is designated. But will he work alone? No. He needs some council of minister. So that council, executive council of governor general was established. And there was no separate legislative council till then. And also, huh, now this governor general of Bengal, they gave him a supreme power. How do they, how do, they do that? They subordinated governors of Bombay and Madras to this governor general. They subordinated other two governors because these were very important uh, business areas, Bombay, Madras, Bengal. So this governor of Bengal was made governor general and other two governors of Bombay and Madras, they were subordinated to him. And also the first time Supreme Court was established. When the first Supreme Court was established as the Apex Court in 1774. So all these things were done as per Regulating Act of 1773. So I can see 15 of you watching now. Now, let us go to another act, Pitts India Act. Please you all can give you response or anything you want to ask. You want me to change language. You want me to talk in Hindi also. Please say that. <coughs> and if you have any questions, please do that. <coughs> 